everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We started the Modern Healthspan channel about four years ago when I was in my late 50s, and I am now 62. In these four years, I've learned a lot through my research and from longevity experts. My wife and I have applied many lifestyle interventions and adjusted them over time. Recently, we've had some comments on the channel asking for an update on my supplements list. I've been thinking that I should review the supplements that I take in a more structured way as well. So we're going to start a series of videos on the supplements that I'm taking. This first video is an introductory overview of my overall approach to using supplements to optimize my health. In later videos, we will go through each of the main supplements to look at the scientific data, explain why I'm taking them, what I want to achieve, and what my regimen is. Let me start by saying that diet, exercise, sleep, and stress management are essential for health and longevity. These lifestyle factors are the foundation of any healthy life. So why do we take supplements? We believe that supplementing to replace elements in our metabolism that decrease with age can be a vital part of a strategy to stay young or even reverse aging. In addition, the quality of our food supply has declined in recent years. Many foods are now processed and contain fewer nutrients than they did in the past. Supplements can help to ensure that we are getting the nutrients that we need. Finally, there are effects such as the accumulation of senescent cells as we age that can be addressed with supplements, for which I am not aware of a nutritional option. Given these factors, we view supplements as a key component of our overall health and wellness plan. Just to be clear, with my supplementation, my goal is to maximize my health and lifespan rather than, for example, to achieve peak performance at any one time. There are many ways to categorize supplements. Are they helping with a specific organ, such as the brain or the liver, or a specific function, such as DNA repair or replenishing metabolites, which decrease with age? I am considering the function of the supplement so that I can check that I have all the key areas covered and not have many supplements performing the same function. I've decided to think about it in two ways. One is by organ and the other by function. Many of the supplements have multiple functions and could have been put in multiple sections. We will cover this in more detail when we go over the individual supplements. So let's go through what I consider the core functions first. I take NMN as an NAD precursor. Although there are many benefits to having higher NAD levels, especially related to mitochondrial health, I have labeled it as DNA repair, as the parts and sirtuins require NAD to carry out their function. I take 500 milligrams liposomal NMN at midday with my protein shake. In here, I also include a pigeon, a CD38 inhibitor, as CD38 is a consumer of NAD as we age. I take 150 milligrams of a pigeon in, in the evening, as it also helps with sleep. TMG or trimethylglycine also has other benefits such as lowering homocysteine and improving exercise performance, but I take it as a source of methyl groups in case these are depleted by the processing of NMN. I take one gram in the morning. Although antioxidants have not been shown to extend lifespan, reducing oxidative stress does seem to be worth doing. So I am taking a few substances with antioxidant capabilities. 12 milligrams of astaxanthin, a liposomal green tea extract with about 50 milligrams of epigallocatechin gallate and 130 milligrams of liposomal glutathione. Removing senescent cells is something I want to do on a periodic basis, and I am taking fisetin as a senolytic. For this, I'm using the protocol from the Mayo Clinic of 20 milligrams per kilogram, two days a month, which is about 1200 milligrams for me. I've just started this and I'm building up to the full dose. I've put spermidine in the autophagy section, though it does have other benefits. But this is the main reason that I am taking it. I'm taking eight milligrams liposomal in the evening. A couple of micronutrients that I could not place anywhere else. One is iodine for thyroid support. I take 150 micrograms. The other is magnesium, which has many uses, including helping sleep and relaxation. A couple of my supplements have magnesium in it, and it comes to around 550 milligrams per day. I mostly take this in the evening. I was not sure where to put the vitamins, so I have included them here. 
My thoughts are that I need vitamins and it's difficult to tell if I'm deficient in them or not. Having excess of the water soluble B and C is fine as they will be quickly eliminated. I've tested for D3 and was in range at a time when I was taking it regularly. So I am continuing to do so as it has many benefits and I include K2 as they work together. More than one of the supplements I take has this, these vitamins in them. So these are a rough total of what I expect to take in a day. Now turning to specific organs. First, the brain. I'm taking three micrograms of lithium based on our calls with doctors Thomas Gutozo and Chris Verberg. I include omega-3s here because DHA is such an important component in the brain, although omega-3s have many other functions. I take about three grams total of omega-3s as well as eating fish most days of the week. I should probably also include caffeine here. Lean mass is strongly correlated with expected lifespan and required for a good health span. So I want to support my ability to exercise and hence maintain and build muscle. For this, I take five grams of creatine. I did not use a preload protocol, but just take the same amount each day. I take a whey powder to ensure that I'm getting enough protein. My powder has 24 grams of protein. In this section, I've also included taurine and calcium alpha ketoglutarate, both of which have multiple benefits as well as potentially helping with muscle building. GI tract, got to keep those gut buddies happy. For this, I want to ensure that I have sufficient fiber. I try to get most of this from vegetables, but also have either green banana powder or psyllium husk. I take various probiotics, as well, most notably Lactobacillus ruteri. The immune system becomes less functional with age and we have to give it all the support that we can. For this, I take 10 milligrams of zinc and 50 micrograms of selenium. My immune supplement also includes some of the vitamin C and D. For skin and connective tissue, I take 300 milligrams of liposomal hyaluronic acid and some days 10 grams of collagen. For my heart, I am thinking of this in terms of reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease by keeping my blood lipids, LDL, APOB, and triglycerides in a good range. For this, I'm taking 300 milligrams of liposomal berberin. Berberin also helps with blood glucose. Vitamins D3, K2 help with the bone formation and lactobacillus ruteri potentially helps as well. It's important to have enough calcium though I do not supplement with this separately. I am constantly reviewing my supplement regimen and considering whether to add new supplements or remove existing ones. In particular, I'm interested in learning more about supplements that support brain health and cognitive function and eye health. Many good supplements are not included in this list. I try to keep my supplement list focused and have a reason for each one. One new supplement I'm considering is rapamycin to help with autophagy. There is growing anecdotal evidence that it is safe and has beneficial effects. I plan to begin releasing videos on individual supplements in more detail in the coming weeks. Thank you for your attention and I will speak to you again soon.